The boundary between narcissism and MGTOW. Welcome to One Mail, and hello, everyone. Thank you for clicking on this video. Make sure to click the like and subscribe for more videos like this. In this video, we will compare and contrast what it means to be a narcissist. In addition, you will know about the various types of narcissists and the distinction between being in MGTOW and a narcissist. People who believe in the MGTOW philosophy may be seen as narcissistic or selfish, or they may simply be individuals who choose to walk their path in life. If you decide to walk the MGTOW path, there will likely be times when you are compelled to concentrate solely on yourself. The act of protecting one's well-being in no way undermines or endangers the well-being of others. On the other hand, a narcissist can and does affect those around them. So, in that case, would you say that you are a full-fledged narcissist or just a little bit selfish? The degree to which a person is hyperactive or hypoactive in the bedroom truly sets narcissists apart from one another. How likely is it that they will cheat on their partner in a relationship? The answer is that there are two distinct types of narcissists. Intimacy for the narcissist, which roughly corresponds to the two categories mentioned in the question, is an instrument designed to increase the number of sources of supply and, if it so happens, to be the most effective weapon in the narcissist's arsenal. He makes use of it. To put it another way, if the narcissist cannot acquire adoration, admiration, approval, applause, or any other form of attention, he will resort to having fun in the bedroom. After that, he takes on the characteristics of a setter or an infomaniac, engaging in random acts of sexual activity with several different partners. His romantic partners are nothing more to him than narcissistic supply objects in his eyes. The narcissist can satisfy his addiction to narcissism through the processes of successful conquest and seduction. It is likely that the narcissist will strive to perfect his methods and will consider his actions to be a form of art. The narcissist is compelled to switch partners frequently because the narcissistic supply is actively engaged in the process of conquest and what he perceives to be subordination. Some narcissists seek out complex situations. Perhaps they prefer partners with less experience. The more complex the target, such as married women, frigid or lesbian women, etc., the more rewarding the narcissistic outcome. Such an narcissist may be married, but he does not consider his extramarital affairs primordial or a breach of his explicit or implicit contract with his spouse. He continues to explain to anyone who will listen that his other sexual partners are meaningless to him. He is simply exploiting them because they do not pose a threat and should not be taken seriously by his spouse. In his mind, a clear distinction exists between the honest woman in his life, truly a saint, and the woman he is dating. When his spouse abandons him, education is crucial. The narcissist is shocked and hurt. This type of crisis might push him into psychotherapy. Yet, deep down, he feels compelled to continue down the same path. His abandonment is therapeutic. Following a period of deep depression, the narcissist will likely feel cleansed, invigorated, and untethered, ready to go hunting again. However, there is another kind of narcissist. He also experienced his bouts of intimate hyperactivity, in which he trades partners and treats them as objects. However, this is a secondary behavior in his case. It usually manifests itself after major narcissistic traumas and crises. A painful divorce, a devastating personal financial upheaval, and this type of narcissist believe that the old intellectual solutions no longer work. Sex is convenient and a good source of the right kind of supply. It happens right away. Partners can be swapped. 
The solution is all-inclusive. It encompasses the narcissist's natural, highly charged, adventurous, and pleasurable characteristics. As a result, following a life crisis, the cerebral narcissist will likely become deeply involved in activities regularly and almost to the exclusion of all other considerations. This type of narcissist is terrified of encounters with members of the opposite sex and even more terrified of the emotional involvement or commitment he believes he is prone to developing. In most cases, a narcissist will withdraw not only sexually but also emotionally from their relationships. If they marry, he will no longer be interested in his partner. He secludes himself in his world and keeps himself busy enough to keep from having to interact with the people who are supposedly closest to him and most dear to him. He tends to completely lose himself in significant endeavors, such as long-term plans, a vision, or a cause. These things are extremely rewarding from a narcissistic standpoint, but also highly demanding and time-consuming. In these kinds of situations, physical closeness inevitably turns into an obligation, a necessity, or a maintenance chore that the individual must grudgingly perform to protect his family, his household, or his sources of supply. The cerebral narcissist despises sex and prefers masturbation or objective, emotionless sex, such as visiting prostitutes. He uses his maid or spouse as an alibi, a shield against other women's attention, and an insurance policy that keeps his viral image while making it socially and morally acceptable for him to avoid intimate contact with others blatantly ignoring women other than his wife. He feels righteous in saying, I am a faithful husband, as a form of aggression. Simultaneously, he is resentful of his spouse for preventing him from freely expressing his masculinity and isolating him from carnal pleasures. The narcissist's logic goes something like this. Because I am married and attached to this woman, I am not allowed to have any contact with other women that could be interpreted as more than casual or businesslike. As a result, I avoid having anything to do with women because I am faithful unlike most other immoral men. However, I am not pleased with the current situation. I envy my liberated peers because they can have as much intimacy and romance as they want. Whereas I am confined to this marriage, chained by my wife, my freedom curtailed, I am furious with her and will punish her by refraining from having sexual relations with her. His seclusion protects him from future hurt and keeps him from the intimacy he craves. But, once again, he secures abandonment in the replay of old unresolved conflict. Finally, he is entirely alone, with no secondary sources of supply. The second type of narcissist is mostly sexually loyal to his spouse and appears to alternate between hypersexuality and asexuality. In the second phase, it was truly repressed. He has no sexual desires other than the most basic. So he is not compelled to cheat on his mate, betray her, or violate the marital vows. Instead, he is far more concerned with preventing a worrying decline in the type of narcissistic supply that genuinely matters. Sex, he says contentedly to himself, is for those who can't do better. Exhibitionism is a common trait of somatic narcissists, frequently verbalizing it by bragging in graphic detail about their conquests and exploits. In the most severe cases, they may resort to using lay witnesses and returning to the traditional form of exhibitionism. This is consistent with their tendency to objectify their sexual partners and participate in sex groups where emotions are not considered. For instance, the exhibitionist can see a reflection of himself in the eyes of the beholders. The primary stimulus is presented here. This is what gets him excited and motivated.
There is no way that this external appearance could be disconnected from the characteristics that make up an narcissist. One is the exhibitionist, and the other is the narcissist, who is perhaps the most extreme form of the former. Be smart about who you choose to be your partner, ladies. There is no hope for your guy if he displays any of these symptoms. You can either let him go, allow him to continue down his path, or accept him as he is. You have a choice in the matter. Those who are around an narcissist can easily see that they are self-centered. Megtow is a philosophy of self-preservation that does not inflict harm on anyone else. Did we leave anything out of our list? Make sure to comment below if you think something should be added and comment on your thoughts about today's video. Thank you for watching.